Death Battle is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash battle. Mankind has always looked to the past with regret for mistakes, and to the future for the chance to correct them. But what if the past and future could be visited at the same time? I'd say buckle up, but where we're going, we don't need seat belts. Wait, is that the right quote? Cable, the time-traveling warrior mutant from Marvel. And Booster Gold, the greatest DC Comics hero you've never heard of. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Our convoluted story begins with the supervillain, Mr. Sinister. With a name like this, you'd just be disappointed if he wasn't a supervillain. In an attempt to destroy another supervillain, Apocalypse, Sinister planned to create the ultimate mutant. So he decided to, um, breed the X-Men Scott Summers and Jean Grey. All right, weirdo, I mean, they're already in a relationship. Just one little problem. By the time Sinister was ready, Jean was kind of dead. No problem for Mr. Sinny, he just cloned Jean, got the new her in bed with Cyclops, and bam, out popped Nathan Summers, Marvel's ultimate baby. Of course, we're talking about comic books here, so Jean eventually came back to life. After dumping the clone, Scott and Jean decided to raise baby Nate together. Oh, how nice, they love happy endings. Until Nate was kidnapped by, ironically, Apocalypse. Apocalypse infected Nate with the techno-organic virus, a liquid metal that converts organic tissue into cold, unfeeling steel. It's basically cyborg herpes, and just like the real thing, there was no cure, trust me, until the lady from the future showed up. Long story short, Scott and Jean allowed Nate to be taken 2,000 years into the future in hopes of a cure. Unfortunately, there wasn't one, because the future world was ruled by, of course, Apocalypse. So now, poor Nate's got an incurable robot virus and is stranded in a post-apocalyptic apocalypse future. What a ripoff. Well, it's not all bad. As the techno-organic virus took over Nathan's body, it enhanced his strength, speed, and endurance. Most notably, he gained a powerful metal arm and a cybernetic eye that can see in infrared, track objects two miles away, and fire lasers. And if any part of his robo-self is damaged, he can just put it back together to get his split. He's more than just a cyborg, though. His training in the future turned him into an incredible hand-to-hand -hand combatant and tactical genius. And like any good 90s comic book hero, he often comes to fights packing some totally awesome heat. Machine guns, laser guns, a doohickey that can control dinosaurs? What more would you need? He became a gritty savior of the future, where everyone knew him by one name, Cable. Unfortunately, despite being in the future, he was running out of time. The virus would eventually overtake his body and destroy him. Good thing Cable's not just any mutant, he's an Omega level mutant, which means his power is ultra maximum level. Thanks to his parentage, Cable possesses incredible telekinetic power. He can move objects with his mind, create force fields, disassemble complex technology, and even manipulate matter down to the atomic level. He uses this TK power to keep the techno virus at bay. Yeah, he's constantly pushing the virus back 24 seven. How does he do that in his sleep? His telekinetic powers are so strong that he once stopped 247 enormous missiles, contained their explosions, and then funneled them out of the atmosphere. Badass! He's also a telepath who can read and control minds on a planet-wide level! He can even shut your brain off if he doesn't like you. Wish I could do that to Wiz. <laughs> Good luck with that. He's capable of ionizing the entire planet's atmosphere all by himself, and his psionic powers extend even further. He can physically displace his body through both time and space, allowing him to teleport and time travel. It was those timey-wimey powers that let Cable visit the 20th century where he met the X-Men, joining their fight for a better future in our past. And that's how he found alternate versions of himself, like a clone named Strife, a timeline where he was a she named Rachel, and another Nathan Gray who was called X-Man. Wow, really, really breaking the bank on the name of that guy, huh? Pretty gutsy to name himself after the entire franchise. Hey, Wiz, uh, is that Jesus? It is. Oh my god. Holy shit, be careful of what you say in front of mutant Jesus. Uh -huh. X-Man's potential is incredible, a showcase of the almighty power Cable could have if not for the techno-organic virus. So Cable said, screw this bullshit and straight up pulled the virus out of himself. 
What did he even grab onto? Literally rearranging his DNA to do so, which is impossible. Across the 70 trillion cells in an average human body, there are over 200,000 pairs of DNA. But somehow, over the course of a day, Cable could comprehend and manipulate each and every one. Yeah, that's why I said hardcore. Without that dumb virus digging him over, he's lifted a giant metal island into the sky, broke the Silver Surfer's board, and could even move planets. To move the Earth out of its solar orbit by 10%, Cable would have to generate 470 decillion joules of energy, about 112 septillion tons of TNT. That's 24 zeros, bitches! He's fast enough to fight the Silver Surfer and was tough enough to survive the Incredible Hulk. But even with all this power, Cable knew he could never truly save the future. However, he did eventually find Hope. Yeah, like literally, it's, it's a girl named Hope. After so much time alone, he had finally found a family to protect. Whether it be past, present, or future, Cable will always be fighting for a better tomorrow. Remember it, Apocalypse. The name's Cable. Booster Gold is a hero, an icon, a brand. He's a vigilante protecting the streets of Metropolis, and also the head of his own PR company. He's a wink and a catchphrase. He's fame and fortune incarnate. But the number one thing to know about Booster Gold, he's 100% full of shit. Michael John Carter was your average star college football player from the 25th century. His future in the future was bright, until his mother caught a devastating illness they couldn't afford to treat. Forced into a corner, Michael was caught betting on his own games in order to pay for the treatment. Should have moved to future Canada. While his mother did survive, Michael found himself in jail. After his time, he just managed to land a job as a security guard at the Metropolis Space Museum and stumbled upon the exhibit on 20th century superheroes. Which inspired him to become a superhero too. It kind of. Actually, he stole all the hero tech he could, and turns out it was the real deal, including a goddamn time machine. Oh yeah, great idea. Let's just leave that shit lying around in the museum that hires ex-cons as security. Alongside his own C-3PO bot, Skeet, Michael took a trip to the past. He used his knowledge of future events to profit off the stock market and form his own company, Gold Star Incorporated. Ah, yeah, that's pretty clever of him. Clever like a fox? Because Michael J. Fox played the guy from Back to the Future and he went back and sports almanac. This PR firm and merchandising house would eventually introduce him as a self-made superhero celebrity, Gold Star. Except Ronald Reagan misheard the name as Booster Gold, and it stuck. Well, now he sounds like a trading card pack. Don't get the wrong idea, Michael didn't initially become a superhero for altruistic means. Even Superman, the most positive man alive, believed Booster Gold to be a huge dick. Who could blame him? Booster didn't care about helping people, he just wanted to make a fortune on problems he already knew would happen. Sports Almanac, remember? Luckily, he wasn't all talk. His stolen technology was incredibly advanced. Like his power suit, which despite making him look like a huge tool, increases his strength, speed, and toughness to superhuman levels. His main offensive gear includes energy gauntlets, both of which can fire unidirectional blasts known as booster shots. Really leaning into that brand synergy, huh? And if an enemy is getting a little handsy, he can redirect the gauntlet's energy through his suit zapping the shit out of anything it touches. Or it can amp up his strength even more. He's just gotta be careful not to run out of fuel. His goggles include heat vision, infrared, and x-ray. And his Legion flight ring allows him to, you know. But at the end of the day, Booster's still an ordinary guy. He's like if Iron Man were a dumb loser. He'd get his ass kicked on a daily basis if he didn't have his nifty force field built. Potentially his most important tool of all. Booster's force field is an impenetrable wall of continual energy so dense that not even bacteria can pass through. It can shrug off physical and energy attacks as well as weirder stuff like mind control. From the likes of Maxwell Lord, no less. A telepath powerful enough to brainwash the entire planet. Booster can even remove his force field and wrap it around something else to protect them or to crush them into nothingness, like my heart after seventh grade prom. Perhaps his suit's most bizarre ability is his mass dispersion field. Instead of blocking attacks, this field absorbs matter and spits it back out. Obviously, if applied to a human being, the results would be... Me at my seventh grade prom. 
And while Booster originally needed a time machine to travel to the past, he has since integrated temporal circuitry into his suit, allowing him to travel the time stream at will or just stop it entirely. He can even hang out with his past and future selves. Booster managed to fight alongside the Justice League. There he met fellow D-lister Blue Beetle, kicking off the most wholesome bromance ever. To be fair, Booster wasn't just an empty charlatan. Sure, he used his future technology to pretend he had superpowers, but as time went on, his acts of heroism became real and often required sacrifice. Perhaps his friendship with Blue Beetle helped mold him into the selfless hero he later became. As much of a doofus as he can be, he's also kicked his fair share of ass. He's managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with heavy hitters like Doomsday and Maxima. He's moved quick enough to dodge beams of light, even flying fast enough to keep up with Flash and tap into the Speed Force. You know, the extra-dimensional energy field that controls all kinetic energy in the multiverse. And his force field is no joke. It took hits from gods like Trigon, and even withstood a blast that was breaking down the Earth at the subatomic level. It doesn't make him invisible. Invincible. His force field is powered by the same energy source as his gauntlets, so using too much of either will deplete the other. He's also a huge showboat, and will take any opportunity he can to get rich quick, like the time he and Blue Beetle stole Justice League funds to set up a casino on a tropical island, which turned out to be alive. True story. It was weird. Booster's story is, if anything, the journey to humility. After years of hero work, he was offered membership with the Justice League of America. And yet, he turned it down, knowing the damage such a thing could do to history. Instead, Booster chose to travel the time stream, repairing its cracks and saving the multiverse. His, his mom was pretty proud of him. The important thing is that he chose a life he could not publicize. He'd be saving the world behind the scenes. It may not have been what he originally planned, but Booster Gold would ultimately become the greatest hero you've never heard of. I am Booster Gold, the greatest hero you've never heard of. Until now! All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, we're gonna tell you how you can boost your game in the kitchen. Home cooking matters now more than ever, and Blue Apron takes the guesswork out. With Blue Apron, you can have peace of mind by getting fresh, quality ingredients delivered straight to your door. So you can cook delicious, easy-to-make meals in the comfort of your home. Choose from a variety of chef-designed, ready-to-cook meals with perfectly proportioned ingredients and plenty of flavorful options. Prices start as low as $7.49 per serving. Whoa, wait a minute. With that kind of price, why am I ordering fast food every day? Blue Apron's worth it, trust me. I would know. The meal plans don't just provide hearty and healthy options, they're tasty too. Not to mention, it's all super flexible. You can skip whole weeks or cancel your plan at any time. Even better, Blue Apron reduces environmental impact as the first and only meal kit to partner with How To Recycle, which makes recycling simple. Find comfort in the kitchen with Blue Apron and enjoy delicious home-cooked meals. Check out this week's menu and visit blueapron.com. That's blueapron.com. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Huh? Hey, uh, buddy, do you mind? You're hogging my spotlight here. You look like an idiot. Oh, I get it. You want to take on the champ to boost your street cred, right? Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. The pavement will be stained with your blood. <laughs> what? Wait, is this guy serious? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! All right, douchebag, you want some of this? <laughs> Let's see how far you fly! You hit like a girl. Did you just punch 
me into next week? Or a million next weeks? Ah! I set this up while you were playing Roadkill. Funny how time travel works. Oh, hey! I can do that, too! Huh? In fact, it's kind of my thing. So, here's an army of me's from every second we've fought so far. Shields off! Oh no! A voice in my head must remove for speed! No! Finally, your time just ran out. What? Oh wait, did you think you made me turn my force field off? <laughs> no, it's too strong for that. I gave it to you. Huh? I'll see you in hell, you goddamn golden asshole! <laughs> Boost terrific! KO! Uh, uh, no! Seriously? I know it seems ridiculous, but. Seriously! How did that golden dingus beat mutant Jesus? Well, it sounds crazy at first, but Booster Gold actually had everything he needed to take Cable out. Cable's powers were way more versatile and deadly than Booster's, and his lifetime of experience in the trenches made him the more well-rounded soldier overall. But Booster had plenty of deadly weaponry in his own right, though his saving grace was that force field. Sure, that thing survived some crazy stuff. Including every single thing in Cable's arsenal. For example, Cable's telekinesis could move a planet and rearrange cells, right? Well, Booster's force field survived planetary destruction at the subatomic level, similar to a nuclear bomb, but on a massive scale worth about 14 tenatons of TNT, over 100,000 times greater than Cable's power output. That's 40 fucking zeros, bitches! Holy mutant Jesus! And remember, his gloves use the same energy as the shield, so that means Booster is packing some serious heat. Even in Cable's fight with the Silver Surfer, while he managed to keep up for a short while, once the Surfer got serious, the fight was over pretty quick. Meanwhile, Boosty's over here in the same league as speedsters like Flash. And I know what you're thinking, what about Cable's mind control powers? Well, Boosty's shield protected him from Maxwell Lord, whose mental powers, like Cable's, could also span an entire planet. Yeah, Cable looked a lot better on paper, but he just didn't have a surefire way to put Booster down for good. And Booster had exactly what he needed to nab a victory. This is one of the awkward things about comparing heroes from different franchises. Cable may be a gritty badass and Booster may be a silly goofball, but those distinctions mostly matter in their own worlds. In Death Battle, we have to compare them directly, and sometimes that means a hero no one's ever heard of wins. Booster didn't just win, he took home the gold. The winner is Booster Gold. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. And if you want to watch more stuff, check the boxes right over there.